Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 39, where you email me your questions. And if I can't read them on Truth Frequency Radio Show Strange World, then I will try to read them here. So let's get right to it, shall we? The first email, email is called Google Earth Lopsided Landmass. Hello, Mark. My name is Ryan, and I want to start off by saying thank you for all the time and work you've put into bringing the truth to light. So I'm sure I'm not the first one to notice this, and I know it isn't necessarily mind-blowing smoking gun evidence, but I still think it's pretty interesting. I was messing around on Google Earth the other day, rotating the fake ball around randomly and I landed on the Pacific Ocean. I noticed that basically the entire globe was blue. Sure, you can find a few small islands like New Zealand, Fiji, and Hawaii, very tiny slivers in the west coast of North America and the east coast of Australia. However, we are supposedly seeing half of the ball here and I'm estimating no more than 3% of Earth's total land mass is visible. Such a lopsided distribution of land makes sense if you are turning the flat earth into a ball, keeping all distances relatively the same on the land side while an enormous ocean is somehow curving all the way across to the other. Anyways, keep fighting for the truth. Thanks again, Ryan. Good point, Ryan. And you guys want to take the globe model, if you get a chance, it's really interesting because I used, man, I used to ca uh, collect antique globes. If you turn it to where the Pacific Ocean is facing you, the, the most uh, of the Pacific Ocean, when you're looking at it on a ball, literally it looks like the entire planet is made out of water because it's the, the Pacific Ocean, that whole section out there is massive. I mean, big enough to hide an entire continent, technically, was without anybody knowing since flights don't go over there. Interesting stuff, right? This one's called New Subject, and it's from Ted. Hi, Mark and Patricia. While watching Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes 162 today, I heard you both talking about D Marbles about, uh, being on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes tomorrow, talking about, I know this is an older email, about the iPhone level app. I watched the level video by Rannick, now taken down copyright strike, and I don't believe that the app will prove anything because, well, there's no curve. Is the best proof and wherever you stand on a sphere when you are on the top of the ball looking downhill whichever direction you will look if you walk drive or flew from point a 100 miles to point b then for every inch you travel you will always be on a level to your current position so when you arrive at point b your level instrument will still show the original calibration of level as it was at point a you only change your position on a ball not your level no matter the distance from A to B, in my humble opinion. The app maker said that the factory calibrated the app to show level as down, and it will always show level as down no matter where they sell the app on the plane or globe, and it will never change unless you calibrate the app yourself to another direction as being level, and then it will always show your own calibrated direction of level no matter where you travel on the plane or sphere. Ted Toth, otherwise known as Delta Nine, and yeah, actually, I would have gone with you there on Ted. It, it, it's 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 an interesting thought, except that Paul on the plane and Jaron and Bob have done some experiments since then, showing that that's not how it works. In fact, the 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 recent test, by, I believe it was Paul on the plane, where he flew from Seattle to Ireland, and what he did was he calibrated the gyro in all sorts of different ways to it was absolutely dead perfect on the floor of the airport. Then he killed the power so that made sure it didn't update it and then powered this thing back up, plugged it back in when he got to Ireland and it looked perfect. Meaning, it, does that is that the silver bullet? No, because a lot of people aren't going to actually understand what it means. But it's a great, great test. Love it. This one's called, Would You Ever Do Re Voice Recording for Pay? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. The, I uploaded a video with you. Uh, somebody asking me if if I wanted to use my voice to to do stuff. Yeah, actually, I would. If if somebody wants me to to do something for them, as long as it's not controversial or or really weird, I'd be more than happy to do it. I mean, got a voice, might as well use it. Uh, let's see here. This one's called bought a globe from Walmart. Hey, what's up, Mark? I bought a globe from Walmart, and this is what it says on the bottom. 
and if you zoom in it says globe it basically says it's only for decorative purpose it's not supposed to use for education which is interesting now some people said well that's because it, it's one all the countries aren't uh ed mandated by the educational system but i don't know it's kind of interesting this one's called flat earth, flat earth experiment mark the michelson morley experiment of 1887 and Sagnac's experiment of 1913 and James Bradley's from 1729. I found this letter to be strange. This guy said he will bet his life on the hollow flat earth theory. Thank you. Your research on the flat earth is the best. Uh, it screwed me up. I'm awake. That's what matters. Thanks again. And that's from James Snyder. And I don't have the screenshot in front of me, but it's pretty cool. This one's called FE Air Supply. Hey Mark, I woke up a little over a year ago while trying to debunk Planet X. My research had led me to pointing my telescope towards the constellation Sagittarius for about a year. I never did find Planet Nibiru. Instead, I started noticing and becoming troubled that the sky didn't change. Beyond, beyond that of the nightly rotation, of course. I've been a backyard stargazer all of my life and took several astronomy courses while in college, but I never noticed or even thought about the lack of change in celestial scenery as the Earth progressed around the sun each year. I decided there must be a problem in my education or some kind of issue with my ability to orientate the vastness of the night sky. It was during my research to... <clears throat> I need some tea correct my understanding of the seemingly stationary sky that I came across a video called Flat Earth Clues by Mark Sargent. I ignored it, of course. I mean, holy crap, right? <laughs> it's funny. Uh, over several more weeks of research, I kept stumbling onto FE links. Eric DeBay's 200 Proofs, your Flat Earth Clues, Rob Skiba, and the Where's the Curvature Dude. <laughs> I think that's Zibron, the guy you were talking about there. Long story short, it was you, Mark, that got me to open Pandora's box initially. Secretly, I was embarrassed even to click on your link because this is a joke, right? Because this is a joke. Literally, those were the words I was thinking as I hovered over the X to exit your video. Then I heard you uttering those exact words. Had you not said those words at that moment in the video, I would have left and likely not gone down the rabbit hole. It's the first time anyone has actually said that to me. Anyway, I've always wanted to share my story with you. Back then, FE was a whisper, and you gave out your private number, which floored me at the time. I'm sort of regretted that I didn't just pick up the phone and thank you back then. With my own discovery that the sky doesn't change, mixed with just a couple of your proofs, I had my own home alone moment. Holy crap, the earth is freaking flat. Oh, that's constantly. That's great. That's from Tony. Thank you, Tony, for putting yourself out there and being one of the Flat Earth believers. This one's called False Flags and Hoaxes. Mark, could you please let people know that people can and have died on false flags? Hoaxes are a different thing. I believe the two are deliberately being conflated. Rob, staying ahead of the curve. And yeah, of course, people. some people die during false flag operations. No, no question. I think that, that people do die. Not a lot of people, though, by comparison. And if you really didn't get into it, you want to get into Sandy Hook again? That I don't know. I don't know if it was Max Malone that that offered it up, but five thousand dollars to anyone that can show me even a ten-second video of a law enforcement officer carrying out one of these six hundred children out of that school because they're tiny. Those law enforcement guys would have been jacked up on adrenaline. They would have been carrying them out in waves. Plus, how long does it take to evacuate 600 children from a hostage situation at a school? It takes a long time. It takes a long time, and, and that never happened. So, uh, false flags and hoaxes, unfortunately, the, the cry wolf scenario is in effect. Meaning, if you can't believe one, you got to be suspicious of all of them, eventually. You do, that's just human nature. This one's called Flat Earth Update, Boys and Their Rockets. Hi all, why don't NASA's rockets behave like their large model counterparts? Model rocketry is a thriving hobby and there have been some monster machines built and launched. These tear off the launch pad at a rate of knots, unlike NASA's rockets 10 times as large, which can take six to seven seconds to clear the launch tower and then seem to lumber into the sky. Compare a one-tenth model Saturn V launch, and there's a, you can look that up on YouTube, with the real thing. Here's the problem. Model rockets stabilize themselves because of the incredible initial acceleration, giving airflow over the stabilizing 
veins. How are NASA's rockets stabilizing themselves at such slow initial speeds? Gimbling the engines won't provide the answer. Try balancing a pencil vertically on your finger. You have to move your finger radically to maintain any balance. Watch a large model, again, and he gives a YouTube link, and another one, another one. We can't leave out those boys from Top Gear who made a Robin Reliant shuttle and launched it. Watch how fast it takes off once they stop fooling around with the slow motion. Now watch the real thing at, proper, at, at the proper speed. Those folks at Globusters cover an interesting theory on how NASA may be stabilizing their rockets at such slow speeds. Have a great holiday weekend, Art. Yeah, Art's got a good point there. And again, kind of like the moon thing. When I initially saw the, the moon temperature thing, I was going, nah, this can't be real, even though I was a flat earther when I was looking at this. Some people are saying that the rockets have so much helium in them, whatever form it's in, that they they actually, with just a gentle amount of thrust, can launch into the air. Basically, the rockets don't weigh very much. But since you can't push them very fast, they go up basically at just a little bit faster than helium speed. Very, very interesting. Well, and, and yeah, Globusters and Jaronism have been really looking into this recently. This one's called Flat Earth by Robert Highmark. I have a question. If the moon is just a luminary and not a landmass, what are the crater-like images and ridges we see? Part of the projection? It's my opinion, but I think that the craters... Uh, I, is it a three-dimensional object? Yeah, maybe, but it also could be part of the project, projection. Either way, again, it's an advanced technology that's putting that thing up there. Look up the old stuff, which we've been talking about, oh, for the last 18 months, lunar waves. What are lunar waves? Is the moon suspended in some sort of fluid? Don't know. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Dude, literally dude, not Mark, dude. I have watched your Flat Earth Clues videos. They resonate strongly. I've heard you are a Christian, and I am one too, and I stand on the Bible as the inerrant... Ooh, I don't hear that word very often. Inerrant, infallible truth of God's word and Yeshua who said he is the truth. I am struggling to reconcile the stars in the night sky of the southern hemisphere. They seem to obey the globe earth observations. Can you share, share any insight into this topic or recommend any videos to check out? Thanks, Jim. And yes, Jim, actually, since you are a strong Christian, I'm going to defer that question and have let you have some fun by going to Rob Skiba's website. You can also check out Zen Garcia or Controversy 7 or Celebrate Truth, but Rob is, is, is one of the first ones to, to go into this. His website is called testingtheglobe.com. So if you're a strong Christian and you want to look into the flat earth, definitely go to his website. He is totally on top of it. And I have complete faith that he is going to stomp anybody when it comes to the debates when he, when he does them in the future. This one's called the... <coughs> wow, as my voice just dries up. Sorry, before this I took a long phone call, but uh, I'm going to power through this. i got to get it out today. This one's called Spirit Level Test. Mark, three quick points. One, I don't using, think using an analog digital spirit level on a plane flight is a good test, or maybe I don't understand how this test is conducted. A pilot can decrease thrust and or use control other control services like ailerons to make a plane descend while flying level. A spirit level would indicate level flight even as gradual adjustments are made to thrust and ailerons to follow the curve of the earth. Two, using a level phone app to take readings at two separate distant locations is a better test, but once the level app is first calibrated, will the app hold that setting until changed, or will it then use GPS to determine its earthly location and adjust the initial calibration automatically? If it does, it would put a hole in this test? Question mark. Three, Mr. Crow's moon wave video. That's oh, weird because I just talked about it. A possible mundane explanation may be already ruled out. If a plane jet trail passed by the moon vertically, not horizontally, it would look almost exactly like what we see in the moon wave video. A straight line of distortion moving across the moon, followed by seemingly no distortion moving across the moon, followed by another straight line of distortion moving across the moon. I've seen a video of this effect. Lastly, I'm on board, man. I just want the experiments and evidence to be solid. Absolutely, I agree. And this was copied to Patricia Steer as well. I... We're, we're going to get this, you know, eventually, uh, here's the problem. Uh, sooner or later, we've got to find a test. It's not that we, everyone seems to come up with, oh, it's slam dunk, 100% confirmed, case closed, RAP, globe. But you got to remember, it's got to be tailored for the lowest common denominator. It's got to be to where you can show this to anybody on the street. 
and they'll understand it in less than five minutes. In fact, in less than two minutes, if you can do it, because that's that's really remember the the general population out there. I'm not talking to people listening here. I'm sure you're fine, upstanding intellectuals, but the general population are mouth breathing troglodytes. So we got to beat them over the head with something very, very obvious. We'll find it. No worries. I have high confidence that we will figure this out. Otherwise, we're just going to do it piecemeal and, and hit critical mass anyway. But either way, we're getting there. This one's called How YouTube Made Me a Flat Earther. Hi, Mark. I'm 41. My flat earth story starts in 2006 when I finally got the internet at home and the first, really, first internet in 2006. And the first thing I wanted to learn about is where money came from in 9-11. Those two questions led me to the documentary Zeitgeist, which blew my mind. I then watched every 9-11 video on YouTube. Six years later, I kept seeing trails in the sky and decided to find out about then via YouTube and learned about chemtrails. I promptly made a video with my phone and posted it to Facebook with no one interest, no one interested bar one person. Which, what, you got one click? In 2014, YouTube kept recommending me flat earth videos. So after some time, I decided to see what I was missing and clicked on the video. I can't remember who made the video, but the realization was profound as I delved into more information. Then your flat earth clues video was recommended. What a very compelling video. After all my research in January 2015, I posted that I thought the Earth was flat on Facebook and added a pic of the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. And there's a video, a link to a picture there. I got mixed response from friends. I got some likes, but people were not commenting positively. Those who disagree were so very vocal about how wrong and on drugs I was. Needless to say, I lost friends, but also gained some. Since then, I've never posted another Flat Earth post on Facebook. I now just rattle off facts in the YouTube comment section when I get triggered. <laughs> There's been so much Flat Earth drama, but I want to thank you for your continued work through all the BS. Kind regards, Freshly75. That is, comp I never heard that. Freshly. That's awesome. It should be like a, a musical artist. Freshly. Not to be confused with Fresh Prince. This one's called Flat Earth Motorcycle License Plate. I figure I done oh I figure I do this since I own flatlikeme.com. I should have one uh, plate as well. So he put this on his Suzuki motorcycle. And with license with motorcycle license plates, I you can do personalized vanity plates. This one's uh, a United States Army logo plate. And it says flat, F-L-A-T, for Indiana. Indiana Motorcycle, and thank you. And it has already been added into the compilation. And it will be used as a thumbnail soon. I guarantee it. This one's from Clint. Says, Mark, okay, didn't know. Here's the same video on YouTube. The Earth is Not Flat by Larkin Rose. So sometimes I miss videos. Yeah, but the reason I'm reading this is because if you guys see a video and you think that I haven't seen it or I haven't talked about it or I haven't referenced it some way, it's really cool. If you want me to mirror it or mirror a part of it, I will do my best. Just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. This one's called The Manchester Bombings because this was a little a little while ago. Again, I'm trying to catch up with my emails, guys. I don't think I'm ever going to fully catch up, but I'm, I'm doing what I can. Okay. Hi, Mark. I'm a huge fan of your show and a total Flat Earther believer. I watched your show and do a lot of Flat Earth research. I believe there are many fake attacks, such as 9-11 and Sandy Hook, but Manchester was real. I'm from Scotland. Well, there's your problem right there. Not because you're from Scotland, but you weren't there. Okay. And though I wasn't at the Manchester arena, I do have friends that were. I was absolutely disgusted when I heard you and Patricia mocking the Manchester bobbing. There were many images and footage of injured people, and I personally know people who were there. The media in the UK are not allowed to show graphic footage. The bomb went off in one of the many, many exits from the arena moments after the show ended. There were parents waiting for their kids to come out, and only a few had just started to go out, so no footage as the ones with the phones on them were blown to pieces. The one video released to the media was in the arena where most of the kids still were. The bomb didn't go off in the arena. In the UK, the media are not allowed into traumatic areas like they do in the USA, so I'd be shocked to see the body parts of the dead people or the very badly injured people. I'm a nurse 
and I have known people who are currently nursing the injured who have life-altering injuries. The bomber couldn't get into the arena. That's why he picked an exit point. Listening to you made me feel sick to my stomach the way you belittled the events and the deaths. I'm upset now because you have made me doubt what I thought I believed about various conspiracies. I thought 9-11 was set up and so was Sandy Hook. Well, okay, the, and I'm going to address this even before I finish the email. Look, I get it. You're in the UK, so the Manchester thing is closer. So you think 9-11 was an inside job. You think Sandy Hook was an inside job or not real. But Manchester was real because you heard someone from somebody. It's the grapevine scenario. Oh, yeah, I heard some somebody's brother's former roommate's cousin said that he knew somebody at the thing. I'm not saying the concert didn't happen. I'm not even saying there wasn't a loud boom there. Okay, I'm sorry. Wait, I got to finish this. The, it's a wonder if I'm, uh, so I'm disappointed to hear this from from you about a real horrific event. In fact, you think it's real that you clearly know nothing about. Oh, but I do. I did not know any of the 22 people who died, nor do I know anyone scarred by seeing and treating those poor people who are horrifically injured. It makes me sad to now have to doubt everything you say now that I've always enjoyed your shows. I'll probably concentrate on other Flyers shows and encourage the other members of my Flat Earth Club to do so. <laughs> Shame on you, Luis. Okay, one, you've got a Flat Earth Club. You're going to tell them to not watch my videos? Fine. Because I I don't believe in the, the Manchester bombings, but you don't believe in Sandy Hook or 9-11. Come on, it's hypocritical at best which is the Manchester bombings. I will, I will put the same thing out. This is the, one of the oldest internet memes that have been out there since the internet. If, if there's no video, it didn't happen. Okay. That's the, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that there aren't things out there that, that of course we miss, you know, car crashes happen all the time. Nobody's got them on video, but in this case, there's no, there's so many cameras. Remember it's a teenage girl concert. Those phones are going to be recording constantly, especially right after the concert. People are going to be, I'm so excited. They're going to be doing little movies about how their their friends are so pumped that they saw Ariana, Ariana Grande, right? Show me a video of somebody outside where the smoke is still in the air, where there's people running around, some people screaming. I'm not saying, I'm not saying show body parts. Show me someone that was even close to the blast, even within visual distance of the blast. Your explanation here, which is silly, no offense, Louise, if that is your real name, is that all the phones that were within distance were all destroyed in the in the explosion. And by the way, if you do a real big bomb blast like that, you're going to get a lot more than 22 people, especially if you're using uh, high-level explosives. Come on. Uh, even a few ball bearings, you should have 100. It, easy. And what, 22 girls? Come on. It, no video anywhere. It, and it, it, it died in the news immediately. It was like, okay, 22 people, blah, blah, blah. And, and plus, we already have the the footage of the uh, the, the great one, which I which found. You guys can look for it on YouTube. Is some of the cops dressing up as, as victims, injured people, lying on the street, changing clothes on video, not still shots. They're actually changing clothes behind. It's awful. Terrible. So no, Manchester, no. It's just another fear beat. And I, I don't want to get off on it too much because it's not flat earth. But when it comes to every other conspiracy, I don't spend that much time on them because they're not even worth my time anymore. Not, not, not that there aren't some big conspiracies out there, but we've dissected most of them, which is why I got into Flat Earth. Sorry, let's move on, shall we? This one's called Flat World. Mark, if you can please call my husband, Trevor. He gets sick to his stomach watching you and Captain Obvious and others about this Flat Earth crap. She didn't say crap. He believes this. And she gives me her phone number. And I wrote her back and I said, okay, I'm not going to call her. I get this every once in a while. In fact, I got a phone call yesterday for a guy that was concerned about his friend. He talked to me for at least 30 something minutes about how I should not believe in flat earth and I shouldn't be telling others to do so. It's like, okay, fine. Prove, prove me the globe. I was just, it's not like I, you guys know the story, which is, it's not like I got into flat earth because I thought it was a great idea. I got into flat earth because I hated it just like you. And then eventually got tired of trying to prove the globe and then flip to the other side. And so I told her, I go, how do you know it's a globe? What, why, why are you getting angry at me? Because your husband believes it. The bigger question is why don't you believe it? So normally I'd give out her phone number and her name's Brandy. This one's called, what's it called? Code of lights in the sky at 30,000 feet. Mark, I was hoping you would also be curious about what it could be and how it's up there. Thank you so much for looking into it. I'll be anxiously awaiting 
to possibly have an answer. Yeah, if you're gonna send me UFO pics, I think it's UFO pics she sent me, or interesting stuff like that. I'm gonna. Sp- I, I will spend a little time with it, but honestly, I can't respond to everybody. So and and again, it's not it's not directly flat Earth related. So I mean, unless you get a really cool video of something, I mean, I may repost some of the videos. I've I've reposted some of my my favorite video sightings of UFOs in the in the past, but um, I just everything I'm doing right now is flat Earth. Sorry, I'm really focused. This one's called some flat Earth questions. Dear Mr. Sergeant, first of all, thank you for your informative videos on flat Earth topics. One of my friends and me are open-minded and tried to find answers for our questions in the latest months. We are cur- we currently we see currently two main issues with flat Earth. One, Southern Hemisphere flights. We have actually found one direct flight between South America and New Zealand and discussed here on Quora. Yep. Hey, last 12 hours, such a short time be impossible to know on FE map. Yep, yep, yep. What do you think about it? I say see Flat Earth Clues 9, which throws the entire Southern Hemisphere into question. Two, satellite communications. I was a technician working for a media company, know very well how precise the dish must be arranged to get a signal. Up until now, I heard only two explanations that could theoretically work. One, using the dome to use it anyhow as a dish. Yeah, sure, that's a good one. We do not, however, know how high-frequency transfers could we be made on such a precise level we experience. One degree difference is enough not to get a correct signal. Signal using balloons like Google Loon. One additional fact, the technical university where my brother has studied has also developed a mini-satellite. This operates even now. Such a private project could not be faked. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, look at the Atmospheric and Transportation Safety Bureau. We've we blown that out of the water a long time ago. So if you say that satellites can't be faked, you're just not looking hard enough. The student knows their own equipment. I'm not saying they don't know their own equipment. But unless he was actually on the rocket that went up there and placed it into space, he doesn't know anything. The mean You put a satellite on a rocket, that's fine. You shoot it up, that's fine. NASA takes over the telemetry and broadcasts whatever signal you want. And they've been doing this since the beginning. Again, look at the Atmospheric and Transportation Safety Bureau. As I know, these are more similar projects on other universities as well. Yeah, not saying that people don't build satellites on the ground. I'm just saying they're not going anywhere. They're ditched in the ocean. Three, asteroids. In case a dome exit exists in a distance of three to 10,000 kilometers, we do not really understand where the asteroids could come from. Perhaps they are broken parts of the dome itself. That or throwing a rock into an aquarium. I think asteroids are part of the system. Yeah, but I, I do think they could be real. Again, just a piece of metal thrown at a shallow trajectory. Let friction do the rest. In case you could share your thoughts in a short way, thank you for it in advance. Best regards, Erdi Kismalak. Kismalak. And yeah, he. by the time I responded to this, I'm sure he's already dug into deeper things. This one's called Moon Phase. Mark, I'll try and explain the best I can. Hopefully the pictures help. The moon phases we see aren't on a sphere. Look at a half moon example. The arm is holding and then the phases of the other photo. The arm is holding a sphere. This would mean the dark side of the moon would be lit as well as the front. We only see a face two-dimensional convexy. We don't see the side of a sphere or the back of a sphere lit ever. The middle picture is wrong. It shows Earth half lit properly, but somehow just the front face for the moon. Does this make sense? Thanks. Freddie Barton. It does. Again, not a silver bullet, but I love, you know, every observation that people, that letter shows me that people are looking. They're trying to find it. They're trying to figure out, uh, the, the you know, more pieces to this puzzle. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, hi, I recently turned to a flat earth believer. I'm a Christian who goes by the Bible and in the Bible, it clearly references a flat earth over 75 times. I just wanted to ask you what you think UFOs are and if believing a flat earth means there cannot be alien life or any other life other than ours. I, my view on UFOs has changed over the years, which is now that I believe in a flat earth, I, I absolutely know there's stuff flying around, uh, around up there. I've seen it myself. You can go pick up a pair of night vis- vision monoculars from Amazon for like 500 bucks and start looking up there and you will see a whole bunch of stuff in the sky. They are not satellites. They do not move like satellites. They travel in squadrons. They make weird turns. They are not satellites and they are not the U.S. military. Don't think for a second the U.S. military has monopoly on what's happening over 100,000 feet up. They, from in my opinion, they are part of the older civilizations. We we could be version seven, 
which means who's version 65432 and of course the most important who was number one and you know who was running around this place when the the continent of Pangaea was formed all these things are, are relevant and so I think the the older civilizations have some advanced technology lying around the unified field engine for one and they are also not allowed to interact with us directly so are they from Jupiter and Venus and Mars no but could they be from either inside the dome with us or just outside and other land masses? Yeah, possibly. Sure. I, I like them both. But I do not think they're traveling vast, vast distances to get here. Not a chance. Despite what the movies may tell you. This one's called Flat Earth Plate. <laughs> Let's see here. He sent me... What, I can't remember which plate he sent me. I'm just scrolling down. I don't know which plate that is. But he said, dude, you had me at, is this a joke? I went, uh-oh. Love the show. You guys are great. Keep it up. That's from Cal Cunningham. I don't, I, and I, I know his plate. I've got his plate, but I didn't uh, save it. Or I, I got it saved in the compilation, but I don't have it right here in my email thing. This one's called Survival Guide. No last name on the air, please. Well, it's good because you didn't put put your last name in the email, and I generally will try to avoid the sent by, which will show your email. Dear Mark, could you please send me a PDF of your survival guide? Also, if you'd like to read any of the following on air, please don't reveal my last name. <laughs> He's really good about that. I've been a flat earth believer and fan of yours since June of 05, no, of 15. In short, what brought me there was a crippling depression brought on in the wake of the death of my mother, where all I could do was lay around listening to YouTube conspiracy videos. That's, I don't know if that's super healthy to do that after a death of a family member. Uh, which led me to the brilliant Moon Faker series by Jarrah White, who sadly denounces the Flat Earth. Like a lot of us, Flat Earth showed up in the suggested sidebar, and I eventually took the plunge. Like our favorite science guy... I have a degree in mechanical mechanical engineering and know firsthand about the compartmentalization in government programs. Having been a production engineer at the feeder level, that is printed wiring boards for minor components of greater assemblies for missile systems built at a defense contractor, which I cannot name. And since you're a movie buff, I thought I'd add that nowadays I'm a screenwriter in Southern California. I recently wrote a comedy feature that includes a side story of a love interest who reveals himself to be a flat earther. Instead of writing her off as a nut job, she goes on to be the major orchestrator of saving the hero in a conspiracy of her own design. So far, Hollywood hasn't shown much interest. Not sure if they're afraid it's too far against the mainstream or if my writing simply sucks. However... If you have any flat earth friendly independent producers out there that might want to give it a read or anyone that likes to read movie scripts for that matter, please feel free to have them contact me at s I'm sorry, storeban at gmail.com. So that's S T O R B A N G Storebang. S T O R B A N G at gmail.com. Thanks for all that you do. Steve. Super. That's great. This one's called Flat Earth Friends Unite. Hello, Mrs. Mark Sargent. <laughs> My name is Joshua. In your Q&A emails episode 36, I think there was a gentleman that lived up in northern Idaho near Coeur d'Alene that was trying to do some flat earth experiments. My wife and I would like to help if you could send him my email address, that would be great. We live in the area. Keep up the good work. I have a couple of my own experiments as well. As well. Thank you so much. Flat out. And I will give his email right now. If anyone's in Idaho and wants to get a hold of this guy, his email address is efp, that's Edward Frank Paul, uh, dot 2017 at gmail.com. EFP tw dot 2017 at gmail.com and yeah so I guys I delete emails so fast after I read them that generally I can't recover the the ones that I've read but I, I will get emails out there and I'll try to hook up whenever I can 
This one's called Moon Apollo Missions. Mark, I just wanted to throw an idea out to you to see if it makes sense within the Flat Earth model. Is there any reason why NASA could not have actually gone to the real moon we believe is inside the dome? Let's say NASA knew we are inside the dome and decided to make the trip but lie about the distance. This would allow for the fact that they have left behind reflectors to be used later by shooting lasers at them from Earth proving they actually went to the moon. In this scenario, because they control the observatories, they can allow the public to see the evidence with records of the laser tests, but doctor the distance to the moon through program formulas of the tests. Your thoughts? Anyone thoughts? Anyone's thoughts? <laughs> Dick Sexton. Yeah, if you guys want to write me back and, and answer that one, fine. The No, I don't think that NASA's gone to the moon. Now, does that mean they haven't tried to probe it? No, of course. You see an object up there, it's 30 to 50 miles wide, you're going to try to hit it with something. But after a few shots, if you realize that negative gravity or whatever frequency is stopping you from getting there, I just don't think you can get there. I don't. I don't think you can land on it. And several people have written me. It's like, why couldn't you land on it anyway? It's like, oh, could you land on the ceiling fixture that's lighting up your room right now? Why? In fact, once you look at it, you're realizing, oh, I don't know if we really would even want to try because it's so small. I mean, yeah, if it was only 30 miles wide, you might be able to get on it, but what's the point? Unless you were trying to figure out what's inside it, and honestly, the people that created this thing aren't going to let you just start poking around the moon, because who knows what sort of damage we could do to it. This one's called Research. Hey, Mark, I have been following your work for close to two years now and have a great amount of respect for what you are doing. I live about an hour away from Wellington, New Zealand, just turned 30, and I am currently facing the severe realization of a lack of purpose. Is there any possible chance of helping you with your research in any way, shape, or form? I have a Canon 1100D with a wide-angle lens, and I'm only working 10 hours a week, so I have abundance of time. Kind regards, Sean. I will write Sean back, and I'll say, you know what? Go to the beach, start taking pictures. That's probably the, the best thing to... You want to help that and spread the word. Be part of the Flat Earth Army. Go start watching videos from IPS. And you know, cause he's currently the, the ranking tactical commander, the best I can tell. He's got people... He's completely solving the idle hands problem, which we, we've had for the last six, eight months, where people are just vibrating. They want to get, they want to do stuff. They want to do stuff now, now, now. And, and not everybody has the, or in the position of, of ha, you know, having people go out and do things. And, and I love what he's doing. Just want to get that out there. This one's called the Larkin Rose FE example. I want to understand this stuff. One on the back of my hands. Uh, also, not sure if you're into the TV series Fargo. It's awesome, by the way. I'm into the third season right now, and the latest episode a few days ago blew me away. They had a brief clip of the fake moon landing right out of the blue. Not sure if you felt like weaving it into a short video clip. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch that if I get a chance. Hopefully, it's still there. And that is the Fargo fake moon landing thing. Yeah, I'm totally going to see if I can grab that. Maybe I'll mirror it. Sometimes, because I when I when I do the emails, I get rid of most spam, and then I kind of just just glance over them because I want to read it for the first time. I don't like reading emails twice if I can help it. This one's called the Fake Juno Probe. Hi, Mark. Check this out. This is from the DailyMail.co.uk. Juno Probe captures Jupiter's rings. Oh, great. There is a photo of Orion, the star constellation, which they claim was taken by the space probe Juno last August. Jupiter was 580 million billion miles away at the time, yet it looks exactly the same as photos taken from Earth. No parallax whatsoever. Download the photo and one taken from the Earth and compare. They are identical. You hear people trying to discredit parallax by saying we don't move enough for it to show up. Well, it's more than half a billion miles enough for them. Regards, Neil. Yeah, parallax, scrolling, look it up if you get a chance. And that is all that motion. Uh, the simple version for parallax, if you've never heard that before, and that is when you're driving down a highway, the telephone poles move real fast by you, but the hills behind those telephone poles move slower, and the mountains behind those hills even move slower. Think of each one of those levels as stars. If you have stars that are four light years away, and then you have stars that are millions of light years away, the millions of light years away stars should hardly ever, ever move. But the ones that are very, very close, four year, light years, 10 light years, 100 light years, those should be moving as we travel through the solar system. Remember, it's not just the moon or the sun going around the, the um, 
uh, I'm sorry, the Earth going around the sun, but it's also our solar system traveling at what? Half a million miles an hour through space, half a million miles an hour every day, every week, every month. And then our galaxy, the Milky Way, going through the universe at millions of miles an hour. You can't tell me there isn't going to be some parallax scrolling somewhere. It's going to happen. If it doesn't happen, yeah, it may not happen today or tomorrow or even in our lifetime, but the zodiac has not changed. Constellations still in the same spot in the sky. I'm not saying it's a design flaw, I'm saying it's a clue. This one's called Just a Guy Asking. Mark, I was watching Under the Dome. Bird has recordings of take talking to aliens in hollow earth, so I re assume you know this. If the earth is not round, how can it be hollow? I know I must choose how crazy I must be. Thanks, this is me. Oh, and he sends me a, a Facebook uh, thing. No, I no, the hollow earth, remember, the hollow earth does not have to be this vast chamber. The hollow earth works in both a globe model and a flat, flat model. Because remember, our civilization, the 95% of our civilization lives in a very, very thin altitude band from sea level to about 5,000 feet or one mile up. If you had a cavern system underneath this thing that was even 10 miles thick, that's way more than we need. In fact, if you want to get spooky about it, think about this. If our commercial airliners cap out at about 10 miles and spy planes at 20 miles, if you had a cavern that was about 100 miles high and 20,000 miles wide, well, then why couldn't we be in one of those right now? Just saying. Okay, this one's called Meteor Hits Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Hey, Mark, whenever someone asks you to explain the existence of satellites, one of the things you've mentioned is how there are never any reports of any thousands of satellites being taken out by asteroids or mis meteors. Well, NASA recently posted on their Instagram that their Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera was hit by a meteor and survived. The images they posted were apparently of the camera feed post-impact. They report that this happened back in October of 2014. It is incredible how responsive they seem to be to the content that's put out by the Flat Earth community. Here's the link and Instagram. You can read on air their full description in the image below as well. Thanks for getting all you do and getting the truth out there. And yeah, here we go. This is from NASA Goddard. 15,000 likes as of the time of this email. A camera on NASA satellite survives meteor hit. On October 13th, 2014, something very strange happened to the camera aboard NASA. I need some more tea. The LRO, which normally produces beautifully clear images of the lunar surface, produced an image that was wild and jittery. From the sudden and jagged pattern apparent in the image, the LROC team determined that the camera must have been hit. Oh, what had to have been? Hit by a tiny meteoroid, a small a a natural object in space. It's just globe reinforcement. Wow. Wow. Seriously? I'm just scrolling down here. It's going, that's a bunch of crap. Just another excuse to distort the lunar, lunar images so we don't have to look at them any closer. Nice. I hate these guys. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark. Hi there. Perhaps as most, when I run into the flat earth theory last year, I shrugged. How can anyone? But having decent collection of books and pictures on things, official scientists ignoring, from physics, archaeology, to medicine, open-minded, it started bugging me. What if this is another forbidden, inconvenient truth? So I started paying attention to details I never did before. Why the flight to India goes over China? Thousand miles longer than directly over Africa. Oh, on the flight to Dallas, I asked a pilot if and how he is adjusting flying to Earth's curvature. He did not know. Living by the ocean, I discovered that eight miles offshore oil platform bottom is visible instead of being hidden behind horizon which surprisingly i'm sorry this is not uh i don't think this is a native language surprisingly is flat when overlaid by ruler and so on and on and on flat earth to be make story short yeah when you say make story short and I guarantee you english is not your native language i think your 12 piece series is very well done and convincing regardless i have one problem meteors seen them following touch them they are well documented where are they falling from the same goes for comets coming as one time piece Haley's is the one I've even photographed Haley's comment they certainly do, do not fit under the dome theory what are your thoughts on this thanks for answering Tom and I answered that in somebody else's previous email during the show feel free to rewind if you want this one's called Flat Earth 
Hi Mark, enjoy your presentations. I am an internationally acclaimed landscape photographer and I have some observations about why the sky goes dark when photographs are taken close to the firmament. I'm checking out to see if your email is still active. If you still want to have a chat. Thanks Richard. And I yes, I will email that guy back. I'm sorry. That was a couple of weeks ago at least. I will, I will write that guy back though if I get a chance. This one's called Admiral Bird on Nickelodeon. Hi, Mark. Back in the early 1980s, there was a program on the fledgling Nickelodeon cable channel called Pinwheel. On this Sesame Street clone, there is a Looney Bird character called Admiral Bird. This character was a marionette puppet and an explorer that would drop in and say ridiculous things, and these things were not taken seriously by the human characters on the show. Perhaps I have watched too many Russian videos lately, but this strikes me as potentially something more than a coincidence. Why call this cad character Admiral Bird? Why not Sky Marshal Bird or some other title that closely associated with av aviation? Many people in my age group, 35 to 45, remember this show, and it's part of our primal childhood memories. Darren in Wisconsin. Yeah, if anybody's got a copy of the Admiral Bird video clip, I'll, I'll look it up on or find or find me one on YouTube. And send it to me uh, a good quality one and I'll, I'll take a look at it might be able to do something there this one's called fake astern actor knots hey mark my name is Shane and I'm from Northern Illinois your show is great and I've been into flat earth for about six months now I've sent you a link to a video of the ISS cupola I would like your opinion on this fakery in the beginning of the video the actor knot is flo floating through the ISS on his way to the cupola Cupola? Is that how you spell it? C-U-P Cupola? C-U-P-O-L-A. I don't use that word very much. Obviously some sort of CGI or trickery. All of them a sudden, all of a sudden the video cuts away and resumes with him positioned inside the cupola, showing the views with a handheld cam. Now when you watch him pan around with the camera, you can clearly see what looks to be a cylindrical black wall all around him, and he is sitting in a model of the ISS on the ground. The wall represents the blackness of space and creates the curve. So basically, he's on the ground showing us the sky above, claiming it is the ball Earth from space. If you have time to review this video, I would be interested in hearing what you think. And it's called Window on the World. It's one of the Scott Kelly videos, and it's on YouTube called Window on the World, Expedition 26. So I will put that in my review section, and we'll check that out. We still got time for more. This one's called Proof Cell Phone Satellites Are Not Real. Mark, today I parked next to a cell phone tower and how convenient. I got full bars, but when I drove farther away from it, the digital started getting weaker, proving there is no cell phone satellite coverage, only ground-based. Hmm. Again, good observations. In fact, he's going out there doing it. Awesome. This one is from a Russian man. I do not even know what those characters mean in terms of his name, but I'm sure it's a name. It's called Documentary. Hello, I've seen your documentary. It is so interesting. I'm just wondering, last summer I saw Saturn with his rings. I mean, I saw it very clear from a telescope. How can you explain that? I, hopefully he's gotten further. I'm going to respond to him anyway. I'll also say what I also tell people here, which is, look, you take a pair of binoculars into a planetarium and you look at Jupiter. Do, do the monoculars make Jupiter look more or less real? Uh, it doesn't really matter because you're in a planetarium. That's what you're, that you, you tell me. And I say, okay, when you walk out of the planetarium, who's to say you're just not in a much bigger one? You're in a building, a Hollywood backlot. You are in a, uh, a planetarium, a terrarium, uh, a giant amusement park ride, whatever you want to call it. You're in a, a structure. So whatever you're seeing in the sky is just part of a very, very high resolution system. We've got, what, 4K monitors now? Imagine what a 1,000K monitor could do, because that's what we're talking about here. You say, well, no, 1,000K, that would take, that'd take too long. We'll be lucky if we have 8K within the next few years. It's like, well, how many times does, you know, before we double it and double it again? I mean, it's not without within the realm of possibility that we're going to come up with 16K monitors. If, we, if there's enough time left in our civilization, I personally don't think there is, but this one's called Spirit Level Tie Pin. Mark, Tie Pin and Cufflink set for the conference. Oh, I see. There's an idea, like a marketing idea. He wants to come up with a Tie Pin and Cufflink. That's not a bad idea. I just don't know how many people are use Tie Pins and Cufflink. In fact, the Flat Earth community is not exactly a Tie and Cufflink crowd, but I like them totally cool if you if you if you make a, a, a demo set for it and send it to me i'll totally show them off to on patricia's show that'd be great 
This one's calling Help Debunking Folk Cult Pendulum. Hello, Mark. So thanks to largely you and your videos, I am a geocentric believer. I've been sharing my views on quota. Quota or is that Quora? And have gotten mixed reviews, which is fine with me. Up until yesterday, I'd never been tested on anything thrown at me by Globers. Then someone mentioned the Folk Halt's Pendulum. I remember seeing what is a kid at a museum. I know, same here. Uh, it's a Museum of Science in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I cannot debunk this. I was hoping you have encountered this before and how it could work on a flat earth. My only thought was maybe the flat earth does move and the sun and the moon are stationary. I'm not even sure if that makes sense. Thanks for your time, Tim Cardwell. And P.S. Here's a link to an article that explains more. No, when it comes to Foucault's pendulum, I'm going to defer to other people, but where do you start Foucault's pendulum? Remember, the pendulum is actually attached to the earth, which is problematic in itself. How do you start the, the, the pendulum? What gears are involved? Is it mechanical? Is it powered? How is it? How does it keep going? I know it just used big, long pendulums, but what's the ball bearing a setup where it's attached to the ceiling or whatever it's to? And do the pendulums move completely differently? Do you get completely consistent results depending on where you are on the globe? Sorry, the full cost pendulum is, if, if that was the silver bullet that was going to take down the flat earth werewolf, it would have done it already. Most people don't even understand the full cost pendulum, so I wouldn't worry about it too much to be honest because it's not the silver bullet for me and, and my take is that when it comes to the gravitational force underneath this yeah it could be modulated to a certain degree to where you could you could do that sort of thing wouldn't be hard i mean it's a rotating gravi gravi gravity well that's really what we're talking about gravity wells have been around for ooh, 20 years at least when it comes to physics engines so why not this one it's called we're going to do like two or three more this one's called the Harp Super Gun. Hey, Mark, hope you got the cookies. Yes, I did. Hey, you guys want to send me cookies? You, my address is in, hopefully I put the address in there. The address is in the description of all the videos. Uh, I was watching Mysteries of the Abandoned on Sci-Fi Channel. They were showing the Harp Super Gun. There are two guns. One is in Arizona, one is in Barbados. The Project Heart program was ramped up in 1961, not long after the end of the bird expeditions in Antarctica. They claim that they have shot a projectile, a martlet, up to 110 miles into the atmosphere. I was wondering if the real purpose of this gun was to test the dome. Looking forward to your show tonight, assuming your electricity stays on, Mike in Minnesota. No, I don't think it was necessarily meant to test the dome. A dome is just a projectile. It's just a, a, a super weapon. That's all it is. But what's interesting is that, remember, it's not guided. It's literally just a cannon. So when they fire this thing, how are they compensating for the curvature of the Earth? Because I hear it can go 100 miles straight. And 100 miles, remember, that's 100 times 100 times 8 inches how are they how are they accounting for the curvature of the earth are they it's not a lob shot so how are they firing that fast because remember it's a real flat trajectory on that thing how are they doing it i don't think they are i think the, the super gun actually helps prove our point this one's called the bible's second edge dear mark i'm delighted you have decided to republish your excellent flat earth clues video and want to draw your attention to some work of my own which meshes with your with your part 10 hiding god as you may know our bible translations are based upon ancient texts written largely in hebrew and greek both alphanumeric languages one significant implication is that genesis 1 1 may be fairly read either as a fundamental assertion or a unique number taken together with many other such evidences we are thus led to understand that the lord has used both channels of communication to engage with mankind in other words the bible is a self-validating text in a fact which must be of interest to all lovers of truth any powerful weapon in their armory mark are you able to help me spread this good news abroad sincerely and with thanks vernon otherwise known as vernon jenkins and he wrote the second edge the role for numerical coincidence in the pursuit of truth so i'll review that one later do we have time for one more maybe two more this one's really quick mark this one's called longest sight of longest line of sight wow threw an accent in there longest line of sight on earth mark are you aware that the longest proven line of sight on earth is 335 statute miles i did not know that but that's really really good 
most of the time we can we can get away with like under 200 but 335 what probably from a mountaintop to a mountaintop that's excellent this one's oh boy this one may be a little long to read you know what let's read it anyway let's end on this one it's called oops mark look at that i jumped the gun you actually did respond and said you felt a, a cs green oh yeah yeah this was a guy that mentioned to me um, he was thinking of doing a debate and he but he has a master's degree in computer science so let me read this one this will be a good one to end on it wasn't perfect well i suppose it's up to you guys you have to admit it's a tiny bit ironic given that grup's master's is in philosophy if you guys change your mind you have my email i'll pitch myself as the right choice succinctly i hate using that word just for completeness one like you i believe in respectful and cooperative truth thinking i'm the opposite of red's rhetoric so you'll get a positive fair fair insult and disrespect free debate from me that's good and this is a this is something for anybody that's this wants to debate us follow this guy's lead Two, a computer science degree isn't about building computers it's about information analysis for example i've modeled physical systems and often whip up a computer model of the earth or the solar system when i'm trying to explain a point to a flat earther i have a very strong general science background i can speak with certitude on everything from classical mechanics to the modern quantum theory i can walk you through the details of michelson morley michelson gale pearson airy sarnak and so on and in doing that show how those results have gotten so wildly misinterpreted <laughs> we'll see i have a solid understanding of gravity <laughs> uh -huh. do you both in the form of theory and the history uh three i was a collegiate debater and so i'm no stranger to engaging in that kind of format four i worked at nasa for one summer in college and my father was a space shuttle astronaut really I did not, I did not even read this part. So I have some unique insight in that area and I'm uniquely informed, uniquely biased in the area, depending on your perspective. Most importantly, I know the flat earth arguments backwards and forwards. Anytime I hear a new one, I do a deep dive on it until I feel, feel certain that I can understand why the flat earthers think it's compelling, why the mistake I believe they're making is and how to reconcile it. One of my big issues with the debate as it shapes up so far as neither side spends enough time understanding the other's arguments i'm a big believer in churchill's advice before you argue against something be sure sure you can argue for it better than its supporters i genuinely try to do that with flat earth honestly i'm hard pressed to imagine you guys finding anyone killing i'm sorry <laughs> killing wow anyone willing to do it who could bring as strong of a side as me hell uh even if you did get neil degrasse tyson he doesn't know the nuances of the flatter side to know which of the arguments on his side have a chance of landing so that's my pitch i get that it's almost certainly not going to happen based that i heard your last video this is just me saying that i think it's a mistake to overlook me but i offer it as a friendly and casual manner you guys should absolutely find whoever you think is best it's your challenge i get that i keep toying with starting a channel so maybe that's the outlet for me anyway if you change your minds i'm around and if, in fact if somebody wants to debate this guy you know what i'm going to give out his email just so if you guys want to go after a guy who's got a master's in computer science who knows his email is ms c-o-t-t-v-e-a-c-h at gmail.com so i think it's m scott veach at gmail.com and mark while i disagree with you about some science i have to say that i recognize and appreciate that you maintain an intent of respect and politeness and seem to genuinely wish that this entire topic wasn't as contentious as it is for i have no idea what reason has become i feel the same way so we can agree on that if nothing else and yeah we'll end on that email but <clears throat> the point was is he got his master's degree in computer science and hey he may have a strong science background if he does have a father who is a space shuttle astronaut well that means he's doomed but that's okay you know if somebody wants to, to debate this guy i think we should actually have somebody in the physical sciences by that you know our archaeology geology astronomy astrophysics any of the the hard earth physical sciences or space physical sciences but if someone wants to debate him by all means uh shoot him an email at m scott veach at gmail.com and let me just make sure if that's his actual real name yeah his name is actually m scott veach so that's it so until then until next time uh shoot me emails at m sergeant 23 at comcast.net and i will either read them on truth frequency radio or i will read them here and until I do another email show, stay flat, guys.